systematic and expository study of the Bible at the Deeper Life Bible Church offers you an enriching study spiritual good, thus opening your eyes to God's own way of righteousness. In this case, you will have the opportunity to listen to one such enriching Bible study. So, prepare your heart to be blessed.
In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you for the challenge you've given us. That we as your children need to live by faith. And that when we walk by faith and live by faith, there is no alarm we are going to feel, we are going to fear. We know that you are not a man that you will lie. Neither the son of man that you will repent. You have blessed your children and nobody can reverse it. You have pronounced good concerning us and nobody can turn it to evil. And we know that if we keep on looking at Jesus by faith, every other thing will bow to your word and your will in our lives in Jesus' name. We are praying, O oh Lord, that your word that enters into us tonight will strengthen our faith in Jesus' name. That it will drive away all our weaknesses. It will drive away all our fears. We pray, O oh Lord, you bring every one of us back into the path of faith in Jesus' name. Strengthen every one of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Last week we began the study of Hebrews chapter 11. And already we have seen verses 1, 2, and 3. We have already seen what faith is and what faith does. Last week we learned of the definition of faith. We saw the description of faith. We saw the declaration of faith. Just to refresh your memory and for the benefit of those who are not here. Verse 1, the definition of faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It talks of something we are hoping for, we have not got it, it is still far away. The faith is the substance of that thing we are still hoping for. And then it says it is the evidence of things not seen. Unbelievers do not have any evidence for what they cannot see. But we as believers, the evidence that is the substance, that is the reality, and that is the receipt, that that thing that has been paid for already belongs to us, even though it is not packed in our garage. The receipt we are holding in our hand is the evidence that we have got it, it belongs to us. And then we are told that others that live before us, they manifested that kind of faith. We are told of the patriarchs and the prophets and the people of the Old Testament. In verse 2, for by it, that is by faith, the elders, referring to the people of the Old Testament, obtained a good report. That's the declaration of God approving men of faith. And then we're told in verse 3, the discernment by faith. What we understand, what we have insight into, by faith. It says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. It talks of things in the future, things hoped for. It talks of things that are invisible, things not seen. It talks of the things in the past, the world, the universe created by God. And then he tells us that it is by faith we draw in the things that is still future. It is by faith we believe the action of the past that God himself has done. And now, now that he has spoken about the description and the definition and the declaration and discernment by faith, he now goes to another thing which is the demonstration of faith. And he gives us some examples. He gives us the example of Abel and the example of Enoch. And the example of Noah, the people that believed in God. That's why today we're looking at the examples of living by faith. The Lord is encouraging us through his word that we need to have faith, that he is have a firm persuasion of the things we are hoping for. We must have a firm confidence in God that he will do as he has said. He will do as he has said. In Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. Reminding us, confirming within us, that our God will do exactly as he has said. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I, wherein I send it. He tells us that his word will not return unto him void. 
And if, if he has sent that word into your heart, that word is going to accomplish the purpose and the plan of God in your life. It will not return back to heaven and say, Lord, I've gone to the man you sent me to. I've gone to the woman you sent me to. But I am powerless. And I cannot do what you expected I should have done. There is nothing like that. Once the word has been sent unto us, it will accomplish everything. 100% of what God intended before it returns to him to go and give the report. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Jeremiah 1 verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. That is what gives the believer confidence that God will do as he has said. It is this kind of faith that permits the believer to rejoice in firm assurance while waiting for the accomplishment of the promise given by God. He knows it must come to pass. He knows it will accomplish the purpose for which God sent it. He knows the devil cannot destroy the power of the world. He knows that God will not deny what he has said. That is why by faith he now rejoices in firm assurance while waiting for the accomplishment of the promise because he knows God is watching over his word to perform it. He knows that we are dealing with the God that caused the things which be not as though they were. Because of that, he is fully persuaded that what he has promised, he is able also to perform. And even though the unbelievers might not have seen the evidence of what God has done, he has grabbed it, he is holding on to it by faith, and is rejoicing with exceedingly great joy. He calls the things which be not as though they were just like God his Father. In Romans chapter 4 verse 17, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickness the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Already your faith has understood that God made everything you see now out of nothing. Already you remember that he fed more than three million people for forty years in the wilderness and gave them food without anything they could see. Already you remember that he brought water out of the dry rock. Already you remember he fed Elijah when there was famine in the land and he didn't know, Elijah did not know, where the bird was bringing the cake every day. Remembering all that, it becomes easy for you and for me to walk by faith and to begin to call those things which be not as though they were. Romans chapter 4 verse 21, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. This kind of faith pleases the Lord. And now we're going to look at people that also manifested this kind of faith. We're looking at Abel. We're looking at Enoch. We're looking at Noah. These three people that the Lord brings before us. He took the first one from Genesis chapter 4. He took the second one from Genesis chapter 5. And he took the third one from Genesis chapter 6. And then looking at all of them together, he shows us through their lives how to live by faith. Abel, the first one, tells us about the beginning of the life of faith. Abel invites us, if we want to live by faith, he says, this is the starting point. It's the one that tells us about the commencement of the life of faith. And then it was uh, Enoch that tells us about the continuation and the continuity of the life of faith. If Abel shows us the commencement, it was Enoch that tells us for 300 years, walking step after step and step by step, the continuity of the life of faith. And as Abel tells us the commencement, and Enoch tells us the continuity, it was a Noah that now shows us the consummation of the life of faith. For it, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. That he is very near to the end. We will need the kind of faith of Noah for the climax, for the consummation of the life we began with Abel. We continued with Enoch so that we can end it up with the Lord. So in the verses we're looking at today, we're going to consider three points. Number one, the commencement of the life of faith. Number two, the characteristics of the life of faith. Number three, the courage of the life of faith. We are now reading from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. 
By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. We find the story in Genesis. And I need to remind you, even though you know it already, because Adam and Eve had offended the Lord, and they were driven out of the presence of God, which is the way to enter back into the presence of God. That's what Abel is telling us. Adam and Eve had gone into exile. They have lost the dominion, they have lost the authority, they have lost the presence of the Lord from their lives. They were outside the blessing, outside the garden, outside the joy and the peace of the kingdom. Who will show us the way? The people that are born in exile, the people that are born outside the garden, the people that are born outside the kingdom. Who will show us the way back into that garden, back into what we lost in Adam? That's what Abel is telling us. You see, the land had been cursed, and man had been cursed, and man is now outside the kingdom, laboring under the heavy yoke of the curse. He is under condemnation. He is under judgment. In sin did my mother conceive me. And in sin was I born. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? No, not one. For all we, we have gone away. We have faded away. Our sins have separated us away from the Lord. Who will show us back to the grace of God? Bring us back into the favor of God. Who will bring us back into the presence of the Lord? Who will break the power of sin? How can we begin again? Ah, that's what Abel is teaching us. The beginning, the commencement of the life of faith. Look at it now in Genesis chapter 4. Reading from verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. But remember, he was born in exile, outside the grace of God, outside the kingdom of God, outside the garden. In verse 2, and she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain was a tiller of the ground. And again, remember that Abel was born under the curse. He was born in exile. He was born outside the garden. He was born outside the favor of God. In verse 3, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Now Cain brought something that had been under the curse. He himself was under the curse, separated from the Lord, out of the work of the hand of a cursed man. He brought the produce, developed produce from a cursed ground. And the accursed man, bringing the fruits of the accursed ground, brought it to God to appease God and get into favor with God. And no wonder he could not get into the kingdom. All our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. They are nothing before the Lord. But Abel did something. And that is the reason he entered into the record of God. And he did it by faith. And you know the Bible says that faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Abel had revelation. What kind of revelation did he have? Now you must understand there are many ways to get the revelation of God, especially in those days. You will see that the Bible says all the creation of the world, they reveal God unto us. The heavens, they show the glory of God, and all his handiwork, they show who he is. God reveals himself sometimes by speaking to us directly, sometimes by his action. What action did Abel learn from that brought revelation unto him? In Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. Can you see the revelation here? Can you see the action of the Lord here? Number one, Adam and Eve were naked. And they, their nakedness brought shame unto them. Number one, then all men are naked before the Lord, and they have shame and guilt and condemnation before the Lord. And so Abel realized... That man had sinned and is naked and devoid of the glory of God. He is guilty and ashamed before the Lord. Then Abel realized another thing. Adam and Eve had made uh, something for themselves to cover themselves up. But the covering was not effective. All that man can do for himself in his own religion cannot cover him up in the sight of the Lord. 
And then Abel realized that for Adam and Eve to be covered, they needed God himself to provide a covering for them. And for God to make the covering for them, an innocent animal must die. To be to take their place. Because the day that you eat of that thing, you will die. And so he killed that animal as a substitute and then used the skin to cover their nakedness. And so that provided a covering for them through the death of the innocent victim. The action of God concerning the covering of Adam and Eve revealed something to Abel. That revelation brought faith in his heart. He said, I know that my shame can be covered. And he brought the offering out to the Lord. Genesis chapter 4 verse 4. And Abel also, he brought of the firstlings of the flock, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. You see, that was the only way all his sins could be forgiven. That was the only way that his sins could be atoned for. Because without the shedding of blood, his sins cannot be forgiven, his sins cannot be remitted, his sins cannot be atoned for. Don't you know what the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 17? Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. You see, an innocent victim had to die to take the place of Abel so that he can be counted righteous in the presence of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 is telling us the same thing. And almost all things are by the Lord purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, it's no remission. Jesus Christ, the innocent victim, the innocent sacrifice, he also came. When he appeared before John the Baptist, John the Baptist pointed him out as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God, we take us away the sin of the world. Abel had the word through the action of God. He believed that word. He acted upon that word. He brought the innocent victim, the animal, to replace him, to be the substitute, to die the death he should have died. And as the Lord saw that faith in him, that followed the same action that God had taken to cover the sin and the shame of Adam and Eve, the Lord approved of his faith. As you come to the Lord today, and you are not bringing the offering of Cain, you are not bringing the fruit of the ground. You are not bringing the work of your hand. You bring the Lord Jesus Christ a perfect sacrifice. You hide behind the cross. You say, Jesus is my Savior. He is my substitute. The death I should have died, He died for me. He is the one that replaced me. All the punishment I should bear from in time and eternity, the Father Almighty God has laid the iniquity of us all upon Him. And you count what he has done as an acceptable sacrifice for you. Like the father accepted Abel and his suffering, then he will accept you. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. A more excellent sacrifice. Because that of Cain was not acceptable, his own was acceptable. Because that of Cain did not have faith in it, it only had self-confidence and the sweat of man in it. Do you know it is faith that makes what you do to be more excellent than what other people do? And then you say, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. By that he obtained witness that he was righteous. Righteousness there is not because of I do this, I don't do this, I drink, I don't drink, I go to church, I don't smoke. But because of accepting that perfect sacrifice, the substitute, you become righteous. The moment you accept Jesus Christ... That he is your savior. You know he died for you. You have the deep, deep conviction within you. That now your sins are forgiven because of what he has done. Then you become righteous in the sight of God. In Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You are justified freely. And then we are told about Abel. By which he obtained witness. He obtained witness. That's the same thing that happens to us according to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 16. The Spirit is a bearer witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. He obtained witness and God testifying of his gifts and he being dead yet speaketh. 
that although he is dead now, although he is gone now, he is still speaking. How is he speaking? His action is speaking to us. He's saying, if you want to begin the life of faith, don't depend upon yourself. Rely upon that innocent victim. Rely on that perfect sacrifice. Even though he is dead, he's still speaking to us. He said, if you want to come back to the garden, if you want to come back into the favor of God, if you want to enter into intimate relationship with the Lord, if you want the Lord to testify about you like he testified about me, rely on the perfect sacrifice that was made for you. Not on yourself. Not on your good works, not on your religious activity. Just lean your whole weight upon the lamp of God that takes away the sin of the world. He's still speaking to us today. And he tells us that is the beginning of the life of faith. And I pray that those who have not started this journey, they will begin it tonight in Jesus' name. But you see, the commencement is not the end. I told you there is commencement and there is continuity. Abel has shown us the commencement. It is now Enoch that tells us the continuity of the life of faith. And it gives us the characteristics of the life of faith while you are continuing to walk with the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated, that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I want you to understand and underline those words. He pleased God. Having said that, you will want to please the Lord. And you say, I want to do everything I can to please the Lord. Because of that desire in your heart, immediately he tells us in verse 6 how to please the Lord. He says, you want to please the Lord? You want to make the Lord happy? You want him to look at your life and be well pleased with you. He said, how are you trying to do it? Then he tells us in verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. How many religious things some people try to do, thinking, if I do this and do this, I will please the Lord. And they don't think about faith. And yet without faith, it is impossible to please him. Our lives will not please the Lord without faith. Our service will not please the Lord without faith. Our prayer will not please the Lord without faith. Even our fasting will not please the Lord without faith. We may give our body to the bond and all that will not please the Lord without faith. Religion by itself, whatever those religions are doing, will not please the Lord without faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe. It starts like that, it continues like that, it ends like that. He must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let us look at this example that the scripture is giving us, the example of Enoch. The Bible records about his life in Genesis chapter 5, and tells us in verse 22, verse 23, and verse 24, this man that pleased the Lord, that by faith he pleased the Lord. How did he please the Lord by faith? What did the faith produce that pleased the Lord? In verse 21, and Enoch lived sixty and five years, and he begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty-five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. To start with, we need to understand that this was a true story. How do we know it's a true story? Because Abel was a true person, an historical person that actually existed. And even Jesus mentioned the name of Abel when he spoke of the blood of Abel and the blood of Zechariah, who was killed in persecution and was talking to the Pharisees. He was an historical figure. And so Enoch was a real person. And Jude mentions his name. And he even tells us the position after Adam and Cain and Seth and all the others. He says Enoch the seventh from Adam. And then we even told the name of one of his children, a firstborn, Methuselah. Now we are told that by faith he pleased the Lord. What was the singular thing, the important thing, the central thing that pleased the Lord in the life of Enoch? Verse 22, and Enoch walked with God. Verse 24, and Enoch walked with God. You see, his walk with God was the walk of faith. And the Bible asks us the question, can two walk together except they be agreed? He was in agreement with God. And he himself had started the way Abel started. 
And because he was 65 years of age, before he began to walk by faith. For 65 years, he was walking by unbelief. He was walking by sight. He was walking according to the course of the world. He was walking in the vanity of the minds of the Gentiles. He was living like everybody around. But at a particular age, at a particular point, at 65 years of age, he decided, I'm going to walk by faith. Here is the beginning of the life of faith. Isn't that the same thing with you? You were living in unbelief before, walking according to the vanity of the minds of the Gentiles, walking according to the cause of this world. But then at a particular time, you took a decision. I'm going to stop. I'm going to start afresh. I'm going to begin a walk of faith. And you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you begin the walk of faith right now. When we talk of the walk of faith, what does it mean? Number one, it means walking in the newness of life. In Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 6, reading from verse 4. The significance and the meaning, the implication of starting to walk by faith. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. You see the beginning, the old life is dead. The old life is buried with him in baptism. And then we are raised up in newness of life. If any man be in Christ, a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And now we begin to walk in the newness of life. Uh, that means then there is a change. The old is gone and the new has begun. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. It says that this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye and forth walk not as all the Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. That means number two now. It means you are walking uprightly and righteously and honestly and walking humbly with thy God. It means that you are no more defiled with the dirty things of the world. You now walk according to the law of God. It means you are walking in the ways that the Lord himself has commanded. It means you are now walking in the truth. You are walking in the light. You are walking in the spirit. And you are no more fulfilling the laws of the flesh. As we talk about walking with the Lord. We have seen the case of Enoch. Maybe the case of Enoch will not help many people. Because he lived for 300 years. And he walked with God. And yet we have only three verses telling us about it. That he walked with God. He walked with God. He walked with God. But the details are not given. But thank God we have the detail of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just 33 and a half years he walked with God here on earth. He overcame temptation. He overcame the devil. He was undefiled. He was holy. He was pure. He lived separate from sinners. He challenged all the people, which of you convinced me of sin. He gives us the details of walking in a way that will please the Lord. Because the Father said, There is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And in 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. 1 John chapter 2 verse 6. He that says he abideth in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. And we walk continuously, continually, constantly, walking with the Lord. In uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. Look at verse 5. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Uh, do you notice one word that is coming up and coming up and coming up again? And in that single verse, that word is mentioned three times. Look at it. Enoch was, this is the word, translated. And then look at it again. God had translated him. And look at it again for before his translation. His life is telling us something. It's telling us what the church is waiting for. The translation, the rapture that will take place. His experience tells us the meaning and the significance of that translation. The meaning of that translation is that he should not see death. The meaning of it is that he will not be found on earth, neither living on earth, neither buried in the cemetery. And then we're told in Genesis that God took him, took him away to be with him and to live with him. You understand then the meaning of rapture and the meaning of that translation. God taking you, not allowing you to see death, taking you to be with himself, and then that you are no more found in the world, and you are not found in the cemetery. And then we are told of the people that will be translated. They will be the people that are pleasing God. They will be the people that have faith in God, and by that faith they are pleasing him. 
they will be the people that are walking with the Lord in agreement with God in everything. The Bible tells us that that translation time is coming. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. That's what the church is waiting for. And thank God you will take part in it. Because you are walking by faith. Because you are following the Lord by faith. As he took he knock away, he will take you away. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and verse 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, translated, caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We will ever be with the Lord. We have seen the commencement of the life of faith. We have seen the continuation, the continuity, the characteristic of the life of faith, uh, talking about Enoch. But then Noah comes up and he says you need to see the consummation of the life of faith. Because he's telling us something, that as we're talking about the rapture, there is a part of that rapture that is similar to what happened to Enoch. But you see, there is a lot relating with the life of Noah. First of all, you know, in the case of Noah, the Lord told him there will be a flood that will cover the whole earth. You know, the Lord is telling the church there is going to be a great tribulation that is going to cover the whole world. In the case of Noah, nobody has seen any rain or flood like that before that time. In the case of the church, the tribulation that is going to come after the church has been taken away. It had never been so like that. No, it shall never be. In the case of Noah, he was preaching to them. He was a preacher of righteousness. But all the people around did not believe. In the case of the church, it's the people that are righteous and holy. That the Lord will select and take to be with himself. And the unrighteous and the sinners will be left behind to go through the flood of the tribulation of God. In Matthew chapter 24, the Lord tells us the similarity between the time of Noah and the time of the church. Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall it be at the, at the coming of the Son of Man. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7, By faith Noah being warned by, of God of things not seen as yet. Remember? Of things not seen as yet. Do you remember the definition of faith? Faith is the substance of the things so far, the evidence of things not seen. Of things not seen as yet. You see, when God warned Noah of the flood coming, nobody had seen rain, nobody had seen flood before that time. It was something that had never been seen, and yet he believed, because faith is the evidence of things not seen. It's that same faith that we have today. Uh, we have not seen heaven, things not seen as yet, but we know there is heaven, that's faith. When the Bible warns us of evil habits of sin because of hell, we have not seen hell, and yet we know it has been announced to us, it has been read in the word of God, things not seen as yet, yet we believe. There shall be great tribulation in that day such as has never been in the world before. We have not seen it, yet we believe. That's faith. And when God warns us of the judgment to come, and we tremble at his word, and we believe that what he has said he will do, he will punish the unbeliever, he will punish the unrighteous, and we act in faith, and we repent. We believe of that judgment to come, even though we have not seen it as the faith of Noah. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. Can you see the connection between faith and fear? God said, I'm going to judge the world. It's going to be terrible. All the unbelievers will die. The flood will sweep them away. He knew that God is powerful. He can do it. God is a serious personality. If he says he will do it, he will do it. It's a fearful thing to fall to the hands of the living God. He feared to wait for the judgment of God. Because of that fear, he acted and did what God told him to do. That is faith. He prepared an act for the saving of his house. It took him years. While he was building it, there were people making fun of him. Uncle Noah has gone out of his senses. He's talking of rain and flood. He's talking of what science does not know anything about. Something that has never happened, that will never happen. He refuses to enjoy life. 
when others are eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, look at him. He stays with one wife and all his sons stay with one, one wife each. Look at him. He's punishing himself. He will not enjoy life now. He's afraid. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. His faith adds courage. The courage to stand alone. The courage to believe the Lord. That although all the other people were on the other side, he stood firm in the courage of the life of faith. He didn't mind the ridicule, the jesting, and all the things they were saying. And then we are told he built there for the saving of his house, by which he condemned the world. His faith condemned the unbelief of the world. His conviction condemned the carelessness of the world. And he became the heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. As we know that the world is coming to an end. Do you believe that? That's the courage of faith. Because all your neighbors don't believe that. They don't believe that the world will come to an end. They think we are unreasonable. They feel that cannot be true. But thank God we have courage in our faith. There is conviction in our faith. We know that God has said it. And God will definitely do it. He escaped the judgment of God because he believed in God. Because we believe the word of God. We are going to escape the judgment. I said we are going to escape the judgment. And meanwhile, we should be living our life by faith. If you look at your outline, you will see a lot of things on page 2 that faith does in our lives. Number one, it is by faith that the sinner is saved. It is by faith that you escape the judgment of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It is by faith. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me will not come to condemnation. He will pass from judgment unto life. It is by faith we escape judgment. It is by faith that Christ will dwell in your heart. Christ in his glory and majesty. The moment you open your heart and you believe that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. It is by faith we live. The life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It is by faith we stand. Others may fall, you will stand by faith. The devil may throw many arrows, it will not get at you, you will stand by faith. He may try to tell you and uh, make some things uh, glitter before you, thinking that that is going to deceive you, and you are going to fall for him. If you have faith in Lord, you will stand by faith. It is by faith we walk, even though I walk in the shadow of the valley of death. I will not fear any evil, although this uh, the right hand side looks dangerous, and the left hand side looks dangerous, and the community looks dangerous, yet we are walking by faith, and we are not going to fear any alarm. It is by faith we resist the devil, and we resist him successfully, and he is going to flee before us in Jesus' name. It is by faith we are sanctified, it is by faith we have access to God. It's by faith we quench all the folly that's of the wicked one. And it is by faith we overcome the world and all the agents of the devil in the world. It's by faith that we're healed. By faith, faith in his name has made this man whole, whom ye see before you stand in. The prayer of faith shall heal the sick. If he has committed sin, it shall be forgiven him. It is by faith mountains are removed. Because if you'll believe and doubt not, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, it shall be so, if you will not doubt in your heart. It is by faith demons are cast out, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. And it is by faith we receive the Holy Spirit and the fullness of the Spirit of God. Where can we be without faith? What can we do without faith? What can we achieve without faith? How can we live the Christian life without faith? How can we overcome without faith? How can we stand without faith? How can we overcome the devil without faith? It is by faith we walk. It is by faith we overcome. It is by faith we are going to be raptured. It is by faith we are going to get to heaven. And Jesus asked a question, When the Son of Man shall come to the earth again, shall he find faith on the earth? He will find faith in your heart. He will find faith in your heart. And by that faith you will overcome from now till that time. And at that time by faith like Enoch will you go with the Lord. Let's rise up and demonstrate our faith before the Lord. You believe God. He will do as he has said. He said whosoever come to me I will in no wise cast out. You believe that he will do as he has said. He said I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. By faith you believe he will do as he has said. He said, His will is for your sanctification. By faith you are sanctified. It is His will you are filled with the Holy Ghost. By faith you are filled to overflowing. 
and he said he will heal you if you are sick. By faith you get that healing and you are made whole. He said you will cast out devils too. And it is by faith you do that. And you see what Abel has taught us? The commencement of a life of faith. And Abel is saying, he's speaking to you today. He's saying, come and start if you have not started. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and his perfect sacrifice if you have not done it already. Then the Almighty will be a witness with you that you are righteous. If you have started, then continue to walk with the Lord by faith. Walk with the Lord by faith. Walk in the newness of life. Walk uprightly. Walk in honesty. Walk in the truth. Walk in the light. Walk in the commandments of the Lord. Walk in the way of the Lord. Walk as Jesus Christ himself has walked. It is possible by faith. It is possible by faith. And let there be the courage of faith in your life. Don't be afraid. Let there be the courage of faith in your life. Don't tremble before them. Let there be courage of faith in your life. Judgment is coming. You will escape judgment by the courage of faith in your life. The world is giving to marrying and giving in marriage. But let there be the courage of faith in your life. And dare to be different. Keep on standing by faith. Hey, don't let the circumstances of life terrify you. Walk by faith. Don't let the arrows of the devil make you to shift your ground. Stand by faith. Don't let the temptation of the devil of the world make you to tremble. Stand firm in your faith. Don't let the example of unbelievers and backsliders make you to waver or make you to shake. Stand firm in your conviction in the courage of faith. You can overcome. And you will overcome. By the faith you have in the Lord. You have started by faith, continue in faith. Don't die by the wayside. Don't stop by the wayside. Continue until the very end, until the consummation of a life of faith. If you will believe the Lord, your life will be pleasing unto the Lord. For without faith it's impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. And that is the reward of them that diligently seek Him. Keep on believing and God will be glorified in your life. 